Americans, you deserve the truth, and I know you can handle it. My name is Jonna Mendez, and I was Chief of Disguise at the CIA. One of the things that was going on when I was Chief of Disguise was an enormous uh, research program into the new advanced disguise system. It was basically the masks that everybody always wondered if we used masks, and this was the beginning. This is a series of photographs of when I met George H.W. Bush in the Oval Office and revealed to him that I was briefing him wearing a mask. Now, in particular, and regarding this photograph, it is a Giddy's image photograph. If you go to the link, you can see the photographer, all those kinds of details, who took it. So what is the anomaly with this particular photograph? Any people paid by the CIA who are working for television networks. This, I think, gets into the kind of uh, getting into the details, Mr. Chairman, that I'd like to get into an in executive session. It was a big challenge to come up with something that finally actually animated and worked to really fool a person, but we did. They learned the art. We actually brought Hollywood back into our labs at one point to look at what we had done, and they were stunned. They're absolutely stunned. Congratulations. My husband was Tony Mendez, and he was played by Ben Affleck in the movie called Argo. Aliens and robots? Yes, sir. You're telling me that there is a movie company in Hollywood right now that is funded by the CIA? Yes, sir. Are there many actors in Hollywood who also moonlight as agents, do you think? <laughs> I think there are probably quite a few, yes. Huh. I think probably Hollywood is full of CIA agents, and we just don't know it. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised at all to discover that, you know, this was extremely common. Tony, they didn't mention it in the movie, but Tony had deep connections to Hollywood to the, the tradespeople out in LA that did a lot of things we were interested in doing. Special effects people, makeup people. Tony was chief of disguise 10 years before I was chief of disguise. And so he passed on some of his expertise to me, but he had a particular interest in the magic industry out in LA. Not so much the magicians on the stage, but the people that were working behind the scenes to make that magic happen. So we went to LA and we posed some questions to them. We said, we have a problem. We're looking for novel solutions. Well, LA did have some ideas, of course. That's what they do for a living. They uh, introduced us to a new concept. They said, what you are calling an operation, we call a performance. That's what we do. We put on performances and before we start Working on that performance, we have to initially, we have to define the stage that the performance is going to take place on. Then you have to know who your audience is, who are you playing to, who are you trying to fool. Once you assemble those two pieces, you can pretty much choose the time and choose the place and simply overwhelm them with your performance. Then they showed us some tools that they used the one that really caught our eye is what's called a stunt double mask. You all know how they're used. When the movie star is so famous or so good looking that they can't risk damaging him. We liked the idea of stunt double masks. They're quick on, they're quick off. Uh, they dramatically change your appearance. And we started using them and found them to be 
valuable to our operations. But that audience piece of it did not allow you to get close enough to one of those masks before the illusion fell apart and you saw it was a mask. So we went back to our disguise labs out at Langley and we invented a whole new genre of masks. Masks that are so good, that are so realistic, that you can actually get up close and have a personal contact with someone for an extended period of time. They're good enough that you can brief the President of the United States in the Oval Office wearing a mask. And he isn't sure if it's you or if it's, uh, if it's someone else. Those masks were the beginning of a whole new generation of work that we did at the CIA. Once we could make these masks that fit you so well, then we discovered we could make a twin. We could make another you. There could be two of you. We could actually make five or six of you, but usually one extra was all we needed. We will respond accordingly. God bless you all and may God protect our troops. But that's only the tip of the iceberg. As longtime CIA lawyer John Rizzo tells it, the relationship between the spy agency and La La Land is quite cozy. In his new book, Company Men, Rizzo says that actors, producers, and other movie-making power players were always happy to help out the CIA in any way they could. You work for the very enemy you thought you were fighting. That's impossible. Then tell me why you've never been to Langley. You've been lied to. All lower-level agents have been lied to. So I am trying to help you here. So you're saying I'm working for the enemy? And that you are the enemy? Sydney, this is your last chance. You have to go. 